And welcome back, everyone, to part three of the My Hero, My, uh, My Hero Academia What If. What if Midoriya had a combo of his mother and father's quirk? Now, two things to be addressed in the uh, from the last video. Actually, did I mention it in the... Th I'll mention it the third one. One, let's talk about the minor thing. As a lot of people brought up in the first one, and I don't recall if I brought it up in the second video, but I'll bring it up again. Um, yes, because Midoriya has a quirk, having one for all will shorten his lifespan. It will burn him out. But due to the very short time when you really break it down that Midoriya actually had one for all, it's not going to be like he's going to die at age 40 like the fourth user did. I believe he was. Yeah, the fourth user did. Uh, who never even fight, just trained his quirk. Uh, it's probably going to be more like he, instead of like living to a ripe age of like 99, he'll probably live to like his late, mid to late seventies or something like that. So he'll still have a long, a relatively average lifespan. So there's that. But let's get on to the two things that did get addressed. One, uh, someone brought up that they th think that Midoriya, like one for all would awaken Midoriya's quirk through his feet and give him kind of like jet propulsion. That's not how this quirk works the way I designed it. The way I designed it, and the way it makes sense, is that it really is a combination of his mother and father's quirk. It's pyrokinesis that he basically can activate by blowing on the tips of his fingers. His fingers are releasing some sort of chemical or gas or something like that, that when combined with carbon dioxide from his mouth, when he breathes on it, creates the fireball. There's no real, and I'm sure Midorian would have tried to figure out if, like, his toes worked or something like that. That's just not the way it would have worked here. And even if it did theoretically work that way, unless he's in his hero gear, which would have be designed to, you know, be collecting his carbon dioxide and siphoning it to his feet, there's no way his quirk could naturally work that way. Another thing real quick, and this is not me going like, yeah, yeah, I was right, I'm just pointing it out. Someone brought up the question of whether or not Midoriya's quirk would actually be a good counter to Bakugo's because of the Nigel Gristler and like sweat Bakugo has, Bakugo in theory could be just lit on fire. The problem is that's not how Bakugo's quirk works. And I'm enlarging to, uh, to illustrate a point here. As uh, this is, in, it's in verse, I don't know if you can read that, but it literally says in his first fight with Deku, that the way his quirk works is the sweat glands on his palms secrete the nitroglycerin-like substance. It is only on his palms. So, there, and plus, we have seen him interact with enough fire users that I don't think that would work regardless. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, we catch up to them after the assault on the, on the, it was the UA compound. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um... There was about a two-week grace period between the events of that and the sports festival. And so, one of the things that after Midori gets out of the hospital he's doing, apart from just working out like he does, is also working on his quirk. Trying to figure out what else he can do with his quirk. Figuring out how large of a fireball, for example, he could make. I think uh, several things he could figure out is, one, he could combine both his hands and go... <sighs> And, you know, make it as big as possible. That is another thing right out the gate. That's a limitation Midori will be working on. His lung capacity. Because he can't just keep going... <sighs> I mean, theoretically, he could. But after a while, after a while, it just... He could only make it so big on that alone. So, one of the things he's probably trying to work... Or tries to work on is just going like... <sighs> making it... Getting his lung capacity as big as possible. Take as big a breath as possible. And just... You know, making a huge uh, stream of fire like that. But beyond that, making giant fireballs, combining them together work, and uh, controlling them, I think that's a lot of what Midori is trying to do and work on. And by all accounts, he is probably one of the stronger fire users in the series. There's Endeavor's, um, not associate, but one of his sidekicks has got like the green fire. He's, he's, uh, he's certainly not a Dobby level uh, opponent. He's certainly not that. Uh, and he's not quite on the level of Todoroki's flames, because Todoroki's flames are or endeavors, but in terms of other more minor fire users we've seen, he definitely would outrank a lot of them. And to be fair, he can certainly do things others can't. Again, pyrokinetic fire manipulations means he can literally create shapes he can move the fire on his own will. So he does have advantages other fire users like Endeavor or Dobby or Todoroki don't. But in terms of like the sheer output, 
No, he isn't able to really... He, he can't overcome their sheer level of magnitude of flames. But still, physical working out and training with his body, absolutely. Uh, and so we would get to the UA Sports Festival. And that sports festival initially start. Also, Class 1B comes and just, you know, threatens them. It's all out war now, says Shinso. And so Class 1A and B and all, you know, sports festival come. And the first leg of it is the obstacle horse and the and the race. The, uh, what was it called? How was it actually uh, referred to? Do I even have that here? I don't. <laughs> that, was, that was another chapter somewhere else. Or another volume somewhere else. But I think it's like triathlon, decathlon, whatever. And there, the, honestly, there really wouldn't be much in terms of change when it came to that. Because Midoriya's quirk... Remember, Midoriya himself is not fireproof or fire resistant Todoroki is a fire resistant to his own flames but other people's flames he's not so much resistant to same with his own ice cork he's resistant to it but his body temperature starts to lower and he does start to get some frostbite on there so him being fireproof is not doesn't happen here so unless he wants to try to launch himself just would just blast himself which I guess is possible but there aren't a lot of avenues to allow him to do that the only place you'd really be able to do that is the minefield, and honestly, I think Midoriya would just go with his initial tactic. I think he would maybe use, like, his, uh, create some fireballs and just set off the, um, explosions to delay people, but ultimately, I think, ultimately, ultimately, I think he would go the same route he would go in the original. Now, when it comes to the, oh god, what was it called again? I'm trying to remember what that, uh, next part was. Um... It was there. It was uh, well, they. It was a team effort, and there was a was an Iron Horn Man match or something. Like, I can't remember exactly what it was called. I think again he would be paired up with uh, Uraka Todoroki, and oh, who else did he have on that team? I remember uh, Todoroki, and who was it? Um, it wasn't Ida. It was someone on his team. I know that. Um, let's see, it was, it was so Shoji, Mineta, Sue, it's blanking, I'm blanking on who else was on the, who was on his team beyond that, um, Class 1A, do I have the list of Class 1A right here at the moment, oh, here we go, uh, who was it, uh, da, 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 da. no, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't that, it wasn't that, uh, I, I, Mo was it Monoma? Was that who it was? I I am for some reason I am blanking profusely on who it was else on his team. Was it a class one B student? I don't think it was. I again I am blanking horribly on that. Give me a second because because th this is driving me crazy here. Who else? Who made it to the finals? That, I guess that's the thing I gotta figure out. Who made it to the fight? Because it was uh, Aria versus Shinso. Then it was Bakugo versus Uraraka. And I know Uraraka was on his team. Was it? It wasn't Denki, was it? Uh, maybe it was Kaminari? Maybe? Uh, either way. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I thought I remembered who it was. I literally looked at it, was reading it again earlier this week to remind myself. And I can't remember who the fourth person was. Regardless, I think Midoriya would certainly be able to keep a lot more of them at bay, uh, first and foremost. Like, they, actually, they would have an easier time staying, you know, relevant um, on uh, in, the, in the fight. The problem just simply comes when Ida decides to rush in. Um, uh, he decides to rush in. He's, Midoriya doesn't have a counter for that, so he's still going to be able to take the headband. Uh, and him and Todoroki, he's not going to use his fire ability against Todoroki in that match because he doesn't want to risk burning the headband. And so, excuse me, ultimately, um, I would say that th that would still go about the, about the same way. His fight with Shinso also really wouldn't change very much. Yeah, he might <sighs> just go and say, <clears throat> and like try to throw a fireball at him. Midori would make him would uh, cause him to go tracking, it would cause the fireball to track him for a while, until Shinso eventually causes Midoriya to unfortunately make the mistake of responding to Shinso. 
and then all for one kicks in, so forth and so on. So nothing really changes up until that point. All Might saying it, I want you to say that I am here. Uh, telling him, you know, you need to do this. Now, that being said, you would still get Shoto challenging him directly, and you would get Endeavor talking about you. Your your quirk's a lot like All Might's. Uh, uh, my boy Shoto has a duty to surpass All Might. His match against you will prove an invaluable test. So give it your all. Put up a good fight against him. That's all I have to say. Sorry for my bluntness. <laughs> I'm not All Might. Well, of course you're not. Of course I'm, uh, Right, of course I'm not. And Todoroki isn't you! <laughs> and, oh my, and obviously then they go into their match. Now, the match would start, and uh, Midoriya, Azuka, Midoriya versus Todoroki! Begin! And so, uh, obviously Shoto immediately goes in with the ice. Midoriya just, <gasps> just blows, throws out the fireballs as best he can. Now, here's the problem. Ice doesn't, fire does not immediately give you advantage against ice depending on the sheer coldness of the ice and the amount of ice. You want proof of that? Watch Naruto and Haku's fight with um, uh, with Sasuke. Firestone wasn't actually very reliable against his ice. Now, granted, you're also dealing with chakra-infused moves there, so that's a little different, but the point is the sheer magnitude of the ice that Todoroki can create and the sheer like level of cold he can create are problematic for someone like Midoriya because even though he can make Pretty large fight, like he can make, like his average now, he can shrink it down to the small orb he used to do, but his average is probably more like the size of a softball, at least, and if he wants to max it out, he's probably can make something like I showed here, something big enough like a hay bale, like a or big old hay bale, like something like that, something really big, but the sheer magnitude and swiftness of the amount of ice that Todoroki can create, not to mention that he can just do it, whereas Midoriya still has to make flames. Majoria is still at a very significant disadvantage here. However, um, Deku also has another trick up his sleeves where he just flash, boom, and just breaks his finger. Boom. And unlike in the original, Majoria can count Cowboys smash, boom, ah, and he just breathes on his hand, and all of a sudden fire just comes in as a giant stream, almost like a dragon coming. And the show is going to just bring up ice bears, and Majoria now doesn't have to immediately break his limbs. To just, um, to be able to, uh, uh, counteract Todoroki. He doesn't have to constantly be doing that. He can, uh, actually now, counter with a one for all, and then make as much fire as, as he can. So, first break comes, or first smash comes, he then brings out the fire. Shogoro is immediately on the defensive now, just, <clears throat> and this means as long as he's capitalizing on the defense, Midoriya can keep, <clears throat> Just, uh, you know, with the prize lung capacity, making a huge ass amount of fire at this point. Like, the sheer level of fire Midoriya can just continually make and control and just merge into this giant flame monster he's making is one of the advantages to one for all. Because Midoriya initially only could really control these small flames. He can control them, combine them, all that, and he can theoretically make more and make a bigger flame, but it would take forever. And with his monster, he still wasn't able to control a huge amount. With one for all just amping his abilities, the sheer level of fire he could actually manipulate is technically limitless. Or at least so vast that it might as well be considered limitless. Kind of like how um, the Ninetales Fox, using an uh, reference again, doesn't actually have unlimited chakra, like limitless chakra, but compared to us, the sheer amount is limitless. Like, Kurama actually can run out of chakra. He does have a limitation, but it's just so vast compared to us that it should be limitless. And so, that's what happens to the point where even, to, to the point where Shoto actually gets concerned, like, the fire actually does clip him occasionally. And Midori just actually is now using his intelligence, so like, con condenses the fire. And he just fires in our ice beam. Midori actually condenses all his fire. Just, Boom! Just basically causes kind of like a mini supernova. Not like a true supernova, but enough, he basically condensed it down. It's so much energy condensed down that it just, boom! And he just blasts Shoto back. Midoriya comes in again. Uh, don't break the egg. The egg won't break. The egg won't break. Boom! Cracks him in the gut. Ah! Goes back again. Uh, but once again, Shoto just keeps fighting. Shoto's now having a minor advantage here because he doesn't need his own quirk to cool uh, to warm him up. He can actually rely on Midoriya's heat to do that. And so there, 
they're once again they're training blows. Eventually, though, Midoriya is gonna start to tire because he's just running out of breath. That that's why the lung capacity training is so important, I think, for Midoriya, because him running out of breath and just like like he can still but he's just <clears throat> yeah, like if you ever try to take a deep breath after you just you're completely exhausted, it's like it is insanely tough. And Midoriya and Shoto points out your breath, your limb, you're reaching your limit, Midoriya, and he just fires up more ice. Midoriya just ah, 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 smash, and well, he doesn't do that one yet, but like he's now his fingers are starting to go. He's just he can't. Uh, he's running out of breath. It's a <laughs> breath. Um, only and finally. Uh, Shoto just points out, your, your quirk's impressive, Midoriya, I'll give you that. I, can, I can't manipulate fire like you. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever seen pyrokinesis at your level. But you're running out of breath, and only defending and dodging is taking a toll on you. Uh, you and you're even, uh, sorry, let me rephrase it. Defending and, not only, but defending and dodging taking a toll on you. Your quirk's derived from your breath onto your fingers. That's how you make your flames. But if you're, but if you're completely out of breath, making any real substantial flame is pretty much pointless. Uh, sorry for all this. Sorry for all this. I appreciate it, though, Midoriya. Thanks to you, he doesn't have. To, he doesn't look too happy. With both your hands destroyed, you can't fight anymore. So let's end this. Taroki continues his relentless assault. Could the next ice attack win? <laughs> to which obviously Midoriya's like, "Who says I'm done?" Uh, uh, and all of a sudden he just, Phew! and it, now Midori is like, now just pit, like he's. Because it's the, what the whole point of the match was. As well, well, White basically says, you're trying to save Todoroki. And Midoriya comes out. Huh? <clears throat> and he fires off it all for one blast. With his... Uh, one All for one. One for all smash with his broken finger. With him breathing on it. To do an ad effect. And he just... <clears throat> Shota gets blasted back. And I said, oh, why you? It's my broken finger. Why go so far? You're shivering, Todoroki. Quirks are just physical abilities. You must have a limit to how much of that cold you can bear. But then you can always use your left side to thaw yourself out, right? Uh, never, uh, everyone's giving it their all. To win and achieve their goals. To make it to the top. And you're only going to win with half your power? I still haven't put much... Uh, put. I've still barely put a scratch on you. So give me everything you got! Come on! And Todoroki... <laughs> and Todoroki... And the mind, you, what are you planning, Midoriya? Uh, what do you play? Everything I've got? Did my bastard and father pay you off or something? You're pissing me off! And Midoriya again, just focus on the microwave. Being in the microwave, it won't explode. Don't explode! Boom! Just cracks him again. This time he probably actually breaks some ribs. Like, this time, uh, he legitimately injures Todoroki. <coughs> and he coughs up some blood. Uh, he let it hit a Todoroki! Uh, so now you're on the offensive, huh? Um, on the offensive again. I don't know how your quirk works, Midori. I don't know where that strength comes from. Uh, <laughs> and but I, but I'm not gonna. And it's not just that. Yeah, that it's not just you that's slowing down. Your ice is weaker too. Should I? Uh, and they're all just so we stop the match. No, let him go. If he does, uh, if he does, he knows we can be healed. Putting himself through all that pain takes a hell of a lot of guts. Uh, what's, and obviously all might realize you're trying to save young Todoroki. It's like I just uh, I can't make a fist. Uh, just trying to meet expectations, smiling, Ben and cool hero. That's the kind of hero I want to be. That's why I'm giving it everything for. Every, that's why I'm giving it everything for everyone. Your experiences, your determination. I can't even begin to imagine what that's like. But if you become normal here while giving it all, I don't really think that's your that you're serious about being deny or denying him everything. And obviously, Shoto has the flashbacks. Uh, that's why I have to win! Uh, I have to surpass you! He has the flashbacks to his mother. <laughs> and, uh, I'll show. And finally, Shoto has that moment. I'll show my father. Yes, yeah, your power! Yours, not his! And then, obviously, he has that, uh, the experience. Uh, that memory of, uh, you know, that's, uh, you decide to be who you want to become. That is true. That quirks, uh, that quirks of parents are passed down to children many times. But yeah, uh, but a quirk is only what you make it. You want to be a hero, right? Then when I say I'm here, that's fine. You're not bound by his blood. Uh, you, uh, you decide who you want to become. And obviously, Shoto's just like, when did I forget this feeling? Uh, and, but I am Midoriya. I don't. What? Well, how do you put it again? One second. Uh, da, da, da. I thought you wanted to win, damn it. So you were trying to inspire me. Which one of us is taking this seriously now? 
<laughs> and he's like, that's hot. Uh, I, but I want to be a hero too. And obviously the famous Shoto, yes! <laughs> uh, it all starts for you now. You finally said it. When my blood pump the year made you will surpass me. It will fulfill my ambitions. Uh, and finally, him and Midori are just kind of staring off at each other. Just like, ah, we're going to get one shot at this. Uh, and it's like, so, uh, come on. <laughs> you get the you get the music, which a lot of people, you know, gave them My Hero anime crap. I thought it's a per pretty good adaptation. Uh, what are you smiling about? With those wounds in this situation, you must be crazy. It's not my problem what happens to you now. <laughs> and you get the... Start the match! It's like, gotta get in close. Uh, just this is gonna be my only chance! And Midori just... <laughs> putting all in, just basically throws fire and my, uh, and a, a all-for-one shot all together, just... <laughs> and then they just... Boom! And unfortunately for Midoriya, I do still think he is kind of shit out of luck here. The fi His fire just can't meet, match the sheer temperature of that. And um, ultimately, um, yeah, sorry, that was nothing. That incoming call was nothing. So ultimately, I would say he'd still lose the fight. But he still won the war saving Shoto Todoroki. The rest of the uh, festival would go on, uh, sports festival would go on basically the same. Almost down beat by beat. And that would lead us into the Hero Killer Stain arc, which we'll cover in the next part. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Later.